All right, so how do you want to do this? Are we gonna are we gonna rock paper scissors? Because I don't know of any other way to handle things like men than rock paper scissors. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. We, we could do we could do rock paper scissors. I just I, I don't want to talk about this guy. I don't either. I, I but, don't. But a lot of people have brought it up in the everyone. comments, so we have to talk about him. And it's will Antonio Brown be a bill? I don't want to do it. Two out of three. All right. Yeah, yeah. Is it rock paper scissors shoot? Yeah, rock paper scissors. Okay, right. We're going to be here all day. <laughs> I'm done. Comment, like, subscribe, repeat. <laughs> all right, forget it. Uh, so I will take... I will take the... Let's go get him. Okay. Because I think you're more comfortable with the we don't need him. I could take either side of this argument. I know. You but know I'm what just... I mean? And uh, and that's fine. You know, you want I'll me be to... I'll be uh, I'll be the guy that says we should get him to help Josh Allen right now. Okay. Okay. All right, that's fine. So again, just to scope out Antonio Brown, his salary if the Bills were to acquire him. Okay. Right? In age thirty one season. His salary would be 12.6 this season, 11.3 next season, and 12.5 when he's 33. If you want to just cut him at any point, you can cut him for nothing. Okay. Right? It becomes a problem. Yeah. If, he, if he's a headache, you just cut him and he costs you nothing at that point. Or trade. Or you could try and trade him again and he costs you nothing to yeah. trade. That's right. All right. Um, so I have financially in working in my favor. Yeah. In your, yeah this, is in, this is in your favor. Um, the roster bonus of 2.5 mil you might have to account for depending on when he's traded. So if he's traded before that, because again the league year opens on the 13th, so March so when's 13th. The, when's it happen? 17th. So you've got four days to trade. So Steelers have yeah, they have four days. Well, they're they're trying to find suitors now, but right. they have four days to trade him. Four days to send the paperwork to the league. Gotcha. Next. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this isn't working out real good for me right now, is it? No, initially, initially. Yeah, initially on, on paper, the deal makes a lot of sense. Um, does he instantly help your team right now? Yeah. Okay. I think I think, I think think it'd be hard to argue that Antonio Brown doesn't immediately improve. His Even team. at age 31? Yeah, I think so. I think for the last six years, he's had 100 catches a year. Uh, there's a lot at of least. tread on those tires, man. Yes. There are a lot of tread. Yes. So... You know, that's something that concerns me about Antonio Brown a lot is the flare-out. We I, saw it with Jordy Nelson where all of a sudden Jordy Nelson just wasn't the player that he was before, but there was an injury. I don't think Antonio Brown has had any serious injury. No. Except for Vontez Perfect taking his head off. I don't know how Vontez, Vontez Perfect isn't an injury in the league. <laughs> the guy literally tries to murder people. <laughs> That is his goal. Uh, so, all right. So, the pros working in my favor. He has a very favorable contract. Mm -hmm. It's a cheap contract for the type of player that I'm getting. Yep. I have him locked up for the next three years. Yep. Um, would he want an extension? You know, that's an interesting question because I'm not sure. I think he's got he's got a pretty good situation right now. Mm -hmm. He might. He is a holdout candidate next season. Ah, yes. Right? So, he might want you to buy an extra two years of Antonio Brown. Okay. Right? That's very possible. He's definitely a holdout candidate next season because, remember, all that money, it's already been given to him. All the signing bonus money, he's already got that. That's in the past. Right? So he okay. might want one more payday before, you know, he hangs up those spikes. So he's absolutely a holdout candidate in 2020. Okay. Abs absolutely. So that works in your favor. Right. He's also a bit of a flake because he did Mr. Big Chest he did uh, while he wasn't showing up for work taped episodes of The Masked Singer for Fox <laughs> right so a little bit of a flake because I think instead of doing television you go to work right but he, he decided to avoid that so and now he's posting Instagram videos of himself working out talking about how no one in the league is better than him and I mean, you take a look at what that would do to your team nucleus, right? 
let's say let's say the Bills do what we've said and they sign Poyu to an extension, they sign Milano to an extension, they sign Dawkins to an extension. You get the buy-in of all these players of hey, if you work really hard, we'll pay you. And then they go get Antonio Brown, and Antonio Brown walks into that room and says, I'm the best that ever was, the best that ever will be. He gives him the Bret Hart treatment. <laughs> And nobody talks to the guy. How does he improve your team if nobody wants to talk to him? If he doesn't fit the culture? You, you had to bring Poyer's up name, name up first, I just, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. This is a fair discussion. There's some off-field altercations between Poyer Antonio and Brown. Brown and Jordan Poyer. I just think for that reason alone, you're not going to try to go after him. You want to talk about culture. <laughs> Yeah. This is okay. no bueno. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I see that. There's should, definitely... Should, should we tell him or just have him Google it? <laughs> I, think, I think everybody knows by yeah, now. Yeah, I don't... I don't... Okay, here's the deal. <laughs> there apparently was some off-field happenings... Mingling. Between, uh, between the woman who is now Jordan Poirier's wife and Antonio Brown when... Before they... Before Jordan... Poirier and his wife were married. Wow, the team mixer is going to be awkward this year. Yeah. Have you signed Antonio Brown? No, practice is just going to be loud. That's it. I'm just, if, po- like, Jordan, if he what goes are you across doing? the middle, yeah, he's Poirier like, just yeah, kills them. Yeah, Poir- Poirier's in the back like, wait, treat me jerseys real quick. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta get to the outside. Treat me jerseys real quick. Uh, okay, that notwithstanding. But it, it is something that is, a, that is a factor. You do it. Like, here's the thing. If we know about it, the team knows about it, and you have to really ask yourself, well, you know, are the Bills one of the teams that have called the Steelers? Because teams have called the Steelers about getting Antonio Brown. I don't yes. know how much they're willing to pay because you're taking a ton of risk. Yes. Uh, I mean, be, to, to harken back to something like this, um, Denny Green, before they drafted Moss in Minnesota, he called Chris Carter first. Yeah. He said, listen, are you on board with this? Uh-huh. With developing this kid and helping him become, yeah, you know. And Chris Carter was like, "Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with it. I'm fine with it. I don't think he's going to follow us, but I'm, I'm with it." Right. So the coach does call players to see to gauge how the locker room would be, right. right? In that in that respect, so if the Bills are in fact calling for the services of Antonio Brown, apparently the locker room's already given him the green light to do so. Not that they have to, right? But I'm just saying it's going to be very tough if you bring him in and you got all these other factors that are going on with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I. Agree. Plus, what do you have to give up to get him? Well, and that's another thing. The Steelers don't have to give up Antonio Brown if they don't want to. If well, he just doesn't show up again. Well, I guess they're, they've already again. made the decision. He, he talked to Rooney, and he's he's gonna they're gonna part ways. I mean, that's, that's what he's saying, but. The, the Steelers, they're going to do what's best for the Steelers. If they can get compensation for him, they're going to get compensation for him, but they're not going to give him up for nothing. If you think you can get Antonio Brown for a sixth-round pick, you're not getting him for a sixth-round pick. No, They'd rather no. he not play than take less value than what he's worth. I like your assessment of the starting price for Antonio Brown, if you want to just trade picks, mm-hmm. is two seconds. Yeah, you got to give two starters. You want Antonio Brown, you got to give two starters. That's it. That's, that's where they are. Um, that's where you are. I mean, and do the Bills have the picks to give? I mean, they've got 10 picks. They can give a second this year and a second next year. But that's a big commitment to a guy that, again, you're taking on the possibility he might not be around. Yeah. Uh, Plus, I mean, does he help your team? Yes, instantly. he instantly, he instantly, instantly helps your team. Instantly makes your team better. Do the things off the field trump the things on the field? That's what I always... Okay. He's a great player. That's he, where it's tough for me. You know, that's where it's tough for me. Because social media and the things he does on social media definitely paint him as a guy that doesn't... That that enjoys his life outside of football. Right? Yeah. And is this his last rodeo? Does he know this is his last contract? I don't think he knows that. So because he doesn't know that, that makes him a liability in my eyes. And from a culture fit standpoint, I don't I don't I think you could do a ton of great things in your locker room by taking care of your own players, right? And listening to your players and building that winning culture. I think there's a lot of things that you can do at one Bills drive. And I think signing Antonio Brown compromises a lot of that. But Antonio Brown on the field, give me him all day. If yeah. I could just put him on the field 
and then take him off and then put him in a box and not let him talk to anybody or do anything afterwards, I would do that. But that's not no. what happens. Put Antonio Brown in Buffalo. How is it different than the way he's acting in Pittsburgh? How is it different? It, they're, they're very. You want to talk about two cities that are very similar. Yeah, as that's far what I mean. as their fan base yeah. and, and things like that. And I mean, I know the organization is very different. The way the Steelers run business is very different. Yes, yeah, vastly different. Run, you know, run but run you're talking business. about a team in uh, in Pittsburgh that seems like they're in a rebuild now. They're getting rid of Bell. Well, they're, yeah, they're in wanted, they want to trade you know, Brown. Tick, tick, tick. I'd be. I honestly wouldn't be shocked if the Steelers drafted a quarterback this year. Another one. They have Rudolph. Okay. The red nose pick machine. <laughs> and, yeah. Big luck. Uh, right here? Yeah. Okay. Um, Roethlisberger, <laughs> they cut him. They saved $17 million And they have a $6 million cap. I can't imagine this team is cutting Roethlisberger. Why not? You already cleared out two of the bees. Get the third one out of here. Yeah, but if you're, if you're going to trade Brown, why are you cutting Roethlisberger? Just cut Roethlisberger and keep... If you cut Roethlisberger, Brown will stay. Really? Yeah. Not if you do it after. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'd trade Brown and cut Roethlisberger and, and just, just start, start over. Because you got you got a solid nucleus of offensive guys there that have shown you can do the job. Juju can do the job. Connor can do the job. We don't know if Rudolph can. Um, draft another quarterback. You know, who knows what's, what happens, but you free up so much space, give yourself some options. The fact remains that even though teams are calling about Antonio Brown, I don't see the Bills as one of them because, one, I can't see them giving up two starters for a 31-year-old wide receiver. Two starters and paying 12 mil right? at the same time. I mean, they have the cash. They definitely have the cash, but I don't see them giving up that that leverage. This isn't a bargain spot, but I'm making one. Rebel. I'll go to an actual spot. You, we're going to a donut shop. You don't think there's going to be cops that show up and see that you park like <laughs> on the sidewalk? I'm not talking to you anymore. Good. I'm about to stuff my face with some Paula's donuts. That's right. Fine. This is going to be a very short episode. Fine with me. Paula's we go.